Hello, and welcome to part six of my NNN Masterclass series, where I take you, somebody who has no idea what NNN is or how AI agents even work, and turn you into somebody who can make sophisticated AI workflows and even sell them. In part five of this series, we finally started diving into some more complex topics, namely RAG. We created our own vector database inside of Pinecone. We set up an entire data ingestion pipeline using Google Drive. And then we connected it all together and had our AI agent answer questions about whatever documents we put inside of it. Now in part six, we're gonna continue ramping up the complexity of our AI agent ecosystem by showing you how to take whatever you build inside of N8N and put it somewhere else. Namely, in today's video, we're gonna be using Lovable. So I'm gonna show you how to create your own web page using Lovable and then hook up your N8N AI agent to it. Now, why are we doing this? Why does it matter? Well, you don't wanna be inside of N8N interacting with your AI agent all the time. Imagine some extremely complex AI agent you've made that has all these different tools associated with it. Do you wanna to have to go inside NADN every single time, open up this chat message and talk to it that way? No, of course not. You're gonna to wanna to be able to add it to any number of external integrations, whether that's Telegram, Slack, a web page, right? Your CRM. There's a million different places you are gonna to wanna to be able to put your AI agent and have either you or your team interact with it. And to do that, you need to learn how to connect it with external stuff like Lovable, which is what we're gonna to do today. And so we aren't just gonna learn how to create web pages using Lovable. We're gonna dive into things like webhooks, how they work, what they're actually doing, and what we need to edit inside of our AI agents every single time we add some sort of external integration. And so while the end game of today's lesson is relatively simple, which is essentially change the interface in which we interact with our AI agent, it's actually really, really important to internalize this because no matter what you build, you're gonna to wanna to put it somewhere else and the lessons you learn here are gonna remain the same. How you set up the webhooks, how you test out the data, and what you need to change inside of here to get it working wherever you want. So without further ado, let's actually jump into it and head over to Lovable. Now, if you've never used Lovable before, it's actually a really cool web app that essentially is like ChatGPT for creating your own web apps and web pages. You just prompt it, it does what you wanna do. It actually has like a lot of depth to it. So if you wanna kinda of, you know, dive down that rabbit hole, I have longer videos on it, like the ability to hook it up to Superbase, do authentication, do Stripe integration, tons of stuff. I really, really love Lovable. Um, and you get free, uh, I believe it's five free messages back and forth. So you should be able to do what we're doing today, which is the five messages. Um, if not, it resets every 24 hours. So we'll see what we can get out of it. But honestly, I would suggest getting a uh, membership. They don't pay me, I wish they did. But what we're gonna do for a prompt is we're just gonna say, hey, I want you to build a super cool web page that I can interact with my AI agent. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So what did I write? I said, I want you to create a stunning web page that acts as a front end to my NADN AI agent. I wanna be able to send text to the agent and receive back answers. The get webhook is blank. Now, what is the webhook? Well, the webhook is what is gonna allow us to send data to Lovable and get data back, right? Think of a webhook as an API. Remember APIs? We talked about that in one of the first lessons. It's just a way for two programs to exchange information. So we're gonna search for webhook. And you're going to see this test URL, production, HTTP, HTTP method, path, blah, 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 blah. Here's what we care about. Respond. You're going to do using respond to webhook node. You want to click production URL. Click that, copy it, go into Lovable, paste that in there. So it's going to say the get webhook is blah, 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 blah. That webhook is essentially like the link to the door to get inside of NADN and send a data. So have that start creating. We're gonna go back into N8N and we're gonna talk about webhooks for a second. So webhook, we're getting rid of chat message. Add that guy, hit plus here, search for webhook again. And you're gonna do respond to webhook this time. Keep this all the same. And it should look something like this. Webhook, agent, webhook. Like I talked about before, this webhook is what's taking the data from Lovable and sending it to our agent. So whatever I say to Lovable over here on our web page. It's gonna get sent to here. The AI agent's gonna act just like it normally does. And then it's gonna send data back over here. And so from lovable to the agent, back to lovable, right? Imagine this chat message is lovable, right? You got this little circle of data flowing back and forth. Now, this webhook could be anything, right? Like I said before, this could be a Slack trigger. This could be Telegram, trigger, whatever. What's important is anytime you change the trigger or where data is coming from, like what data is kickstarting your AI agent, there's two things you always need to think about because they're probably gonna to need to be edited. 
One is going to be inside here, inside the AI agent, and one is going to be inside the memory. So inside the AI agent, you have the, so the source for prompt. Now, for our last five lessons, these have always been the chat trigger node, but that's going to change now because it's obviously not coming from the chat trigger. It's going to be defined below, and it's going to have to be something that goes in here. Now, what is that something going to be? I'll show you later. We can switch it back to chat for now. Same thing with memory. We need to give it a new session key. So the session key is like a tag for every conversation you have with it. So it kind of remembers what conversation was what. Normally, it's automatically done via the chat trigger node. But again, we're going to have to do define below and give it a key, right? What that key will be depends. We'll dive into that in a second. Again, you can put it back to chat trigger for now. And that noise, I'm not sure if it came through, was Lovable telling us, hey, we're done. Boom. OK, here it is. Here's our little AI assistant. This is, think of the chat window we had before in NADN. It's now on this web page, right? And this is a very simplistic version. This could be, we could really spruce this up, but we're just keeping it simple for now. So what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We're going to send in a message and an error is going to occur. And then we're going to go through some troubleshooting steps and show you where the data should be going. Now, the first thing you want to do with Level because it always screws this up every time. Go to production URL, copy this again, and tell it, hey, make sure the data is going to Lovable through this webhook. So I said, hey, make sure the messages I send are going through this get webhook, because it never does it right the first time. You always have to double check. It'll do a post webhook instead. It always has to be get. So OK, it says it's implemented. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to give it a message. And in a perfect world, that message would go to our NADN backend. It would process it like normal, and then it would send us a response. But we're going to get an error, and it's expected. So I said hello. We got an error. And what we want to do is we want to go back into NADN. We want to go to executions, and we want to see an error here. Good. Uh, no, this is an older one. What are we looking for? We're looking for an error. And I'm not seeing an error. Now, why is that? OK, so the actual problem was I hadn't saved my workflow. So make sure you save your workflow after you do that webhook. Go into Lovable, send another message. Go back into NADN. Go to executions, and you're going to see this. You're going to see an error on your last message. Now, why is that? Well, if we go to debug and editor, we see that the webhook got information. But if I click on here, right, remember that? We had an issue with our source for the prompt. So we need to change that to define below. And what the prompt should be is the prompt should be the message. And if I come down here on the left under query, you'll see message. It says hi. I'm going to put that in there. That means the prompt is always going to be whatever the message is for Lovable. So I'm saying, hey, whatever this is, whatever message I send, this needs to be the prompt. Easy. Now, same thing with simple memory. We're going to go to define below. Come over here to mapping. Go to webhook. And now we need to figure out what we want to put as a key. Remember, the key needs to be some sort of unique identifier for every conversation. You could have Lovable send like a unique ID for every message. But for this, we're just going to use the real IP. So just drag over this IP over here. Some You just need something that's unique. And this works just fine. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to execute the step. And we should see it run normally. And if I scroll down here to the right, you'll see on the bottom, the output, hello, how can I assist you today? So it got the message from Lovable, and we know it actually gave us a response inside of NADN. So half the battle has already been won. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out, hey, how do we push this data from NADN back to Lovable? And the way we do that is going to be through this webhook. But similar to our first troubleshooting steps, we're probably going to see an issue here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to preempt this. right? We're going to go to output. I want you to copy this. And we're going to tell Lovable, hey, you're about to get, you're going to get responses from NADN that look like this. So I said, hey, NADN is going to give you responses in JSON that look like this. And I copied and pasted the output. This is us just telling Lovable, hey, make sure the web page is ready to take the NADN responses and parse it properly, right? Because it might not have done it automatically. So this is just us preempting it. And once it does its edits, we're going to send the message. So it said it updated it. So. I come inside here and go to respond to webhook and I hit execute step. It's probably not going to show it yet. And that's OK. So let's go back, make sure this is saved, go to Lovable, and let's test it one more time and say hello. I received your message but couldn't generate a response. Hmm. Back to executions. Let's see the latest one. Now, this whole back and forth was troubleshooting and executions. Get used to this. 
this is what it's like when you are connecting your AI agent to some sort of external source, whether that's lovable, which tends to be the most finicky, or even something like Slack or Telegram, right? This kind of like initial battle where you're trying to see like where data is going, where it's getting stuck, what needs to be changed. This is just part of the process. And it's one you need to get comfortable with and understand if you really want to like start using these for real in production, because you're never just going to have these things sit in any end. You're always going to push it to something external. So just make peace with this sort of like process, right? But this is really what you want, right? Because right here, green check marks, green check marks. I know it's working inside of NNN. Like that's if you know your AA, your agent's working on the back end, that's the most important part. Now we're just like, hey, how can you display what you need to display properly? So I'm going to go to copy to editor again one more time. Unpin is fine. Go into the webhook, and I'm just going to copy this one more time and say same thing I said to level before. Hey, this is what the data is looking like coming out. Like you need to get ready for it. So, um, so I said, it says there was an error, but it's working on the end and back end. The end and output looks like this. And I copy pasted it right. Similar to our previous message. We're just really trying to get level to fix what it needs to fix. All right. So it says it added some logging. So we're just going to try testing it one more time. So it's still saying it can't receive the response. So I'm just putting that in the lovable and having a debug. I'm not too worried about this, right? Because I know. I know it's working on the back end, and that's all that really matters. It's just a lovable problem. But this is how you do it, right? You're just going to keep going back and forth. You're going to identify what the exact issue is. And if you know it's all green in the back, you know you're on the right path. So it says, hey, I see the issue. The format's different than expected. You know, it really shouldn't be different than expected because I gave it to them. But that's OK. So it says it fix it. So let's try it one last time. Say hello. Boom. Now we got it working. Hi, I'm there. I'm here to help. What do you need with assistance today? Hey, can you tell me what happened in Q4? Can't type. So I'm asking, hey, can you tell me what happened in the Q4 meeting notes? Let's see if the whole rag functionality is still working. Cool. And then, hey, gave me the meeting notes. So, hey, we, we got this working now. So I'm going to go back inside of here. I'm going to go to the editor. I'm going to save this. So let's talk about what we did real quick. We took our N8N AI agent, and we now just gave it an entire website. If you're unlovable, you can actually go ahead and publish this and or set, put it to GitHub and actually talk to it online and have someone else do it too. But that was just a quick tutorial of how to set this up on an external web page. And that process is pretty much mirrored in any setup where you're putting it somewhere else, right? You're going to change the trigger. Some things will be different for each trigger, right? If I do Slack, for example, right, it'll be like, hey, do you want it to trigger on like an instant message or do you want it to trigger if it's on a channel, whatever. But the idea that I'm going to have to go in here and change the prompt and then I'm going to have to go in here and change the memory, those are the two biggest things that trip up everybody. And the general flow of like, hey, I set it up the first time, I'm going to send data, see what the data looks like, then map it then push the data back to wherever that is, in this case, lovable, and troubleshoot there. That kind of cyclic troubleshooting process, that's just how it goes, right? Again, you got to kind of fall in love with it a little bit. But as you can see now, we have a web page with our AI agent. We're talking to it outside of NADN, and that's a huge step forward. And so that is where I'm going to leave you at the end of part six. As you're starting to see, we're just layering more and more functionalities on this. This one might have seemed rather simple, right? We're just talking to it somewhere else, but it's actually really, really important because the whole idea of turning these workflows into essentially web apps and SaaS projects is huge in the AI agency space in terms of selling these to people. So this is actually really, really important, even if it seemed rather simple. So as always, let me know what you thought of this in the comments. Check out the school if you want more resources and get ready for part seven because we have a lot more coming down the pipe as we continue to make these more and more complex.